Summer is supposed to be an opportunity to slow down. But when you look at your kids, you can't help but notice that your kids are growing up fast. Help them build independence as they grow with Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app for families where parents can keep an eye on kids' money habits while kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely. It's the easy, convenient way to raise financially smart kids. Get your first month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash Spotify. Today on CityCast Boise, summer's coming to an end and we have your ultimate guide to make the most of it. From an indoor dance party and a small town rodeo to a new festival in Meridian, our team has your calendar planned out. Plus, listen for our secret river spots, the best places to see stars, and tips for the sweetest farmer's market tomatoes. It's Thursday, August 1st. I'm Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. We're already into August, and joining me today is Blake Hunter and Evelyn Avitia with their top picks and what we need to be doing in August. Hey, you two. I can't believe summer's over, basically. Oh, no, Blake. No, not yet. You can't say that yet. (laughs) (laughs) It is. I'm sorry to tell you. (laughs) I'm not ready. (laughs) I know. Well, Blake, since summer is almost over in your head, I'm going to live in denial about that. Um, What is the August activity for the end of summer that people need to be doing? I think August is a tough one. First of all, it's kind of a half of a month for a lot of people because you're going back to school and even just the stress of being like going back to school takes like two weeks out of your life every (laughs) every time. So it's kind of it's kind of a weird month. It's a half month. It's also oftentimes really smoky and really hot. So my pick of the month um, is a big shout out of gratitude to all of the booking agencies and all of the venues for filling up the music calendar this month um, because I feel like there are so many good shows to go to um, just kind of all over. I mean, lots of different venues. Um, For example, Outlaw Field is absolutely booked. I feel like this is probably its busiest month of the year. So that is outdoors, but it's at least, you know, all of their shows are pretty much in the evening. And so you get to see a really good show um, as the sun is setting, which I think is a beautiful experience out at Outlaw Field. Um, And then two, two shows that I'm really excited about is there's a Charlie XCX party. She's not actually coming to Boise, Aww. but there's a there's a Charlie <laughs> party um, on the 15th and then later that week or the next week, um, Waxahachie, who's this like really lovely folk artist that I love, um, is also coming. Okay, wait, yeah, tell, tell me more about them. I've heard you talk about them. I don't know who that is, I, I, yeah. but I'm interested. I want to I wanna be interested and want to go. Okay, so she's, I don't know, it's its funny, the, the like Charlie and Waxahachie uh, dichotomy, this is like the only kind of binary that I subscribe to, but it's like, <laughs> Charlie's got her like vulnerability, but also like kind of brazen confidence pop artist. I mean, like she is the artist of the summer right now. Um, and then on the other side of it is Waxahachie, which is like the Southern kind of intellectual folksy artist. Um, and I think you just got to listen to her to know what the vibe is. And I mean, there are two concerts in one week that like could not be further apart, but I'm so excited about both of them. But if neither of those are your taste, that's fine. I get it. Um, But there are so many other really, really good shows this month to go to. Um, And some, I mean, especially for indoors one, that's, I feel like exactly what people need um, to kind of get through this month. August is sometimes a month that you just get through. So I think that there's a lot of good music to help you do that. Blake, where are you going to see these concerts at? Where where can I find this fun these fun music events? Yeah, the the two that I mentioned are both at Tree Fort Music Hall, um, but then there are so many other events. I mean, like a ton at the Shrine um, that are more like local bands and stuff. So you can pretty much find something at every event or every venue around town. Um, but Tree Fort Music Hall is booked and busy this month for sure. Wow. Okay, so I'm adding Charlie XCX night on my calendar. Let's We're go. We're going to the Tree Fort Hall and. It's going to be great. I think I'm going to join you guys. I've been loving that it. album. I know. It's, yeah. it's a brat summer for me, too. <laughs> yes. Evelyn, what are you looking forward to in August? Oh, my goodness. It is August, which means it is Caldwell Night Rodeo Month. This is such a big deal here in Caldwell. And they're celebrating their 100th anniversary, which is crazy. That is bonkers. Yeah, it's just a really big community event. I know our mayor has talked about how 
growing up, you know, he was always at this event. And so I think the community is very supportive of the rodeo and everybody gets really excited. So it's from August 13th through the 17th. Um, Of course, Friday and Saturday sold out, but you can still buy tickets for Tuesday through Thursday. But just be super cautious of where you are buying tickets because There are resellers who are really hiking up those prices and trying to sell tickets for Friday and Saturday for hundreds of dollars when that is not how much these tickets cost. Um, So if you are looking to buy tickets for Friday or Saturday, yeah, just be really cautious. Um, The Caldwell Night Rodeo website is where you can buy those tickets or you can go to DMB and maybe they are selling tickets, but the eTix is really the only authorized um, source for buying those rodeo tickets. Oh, good to know. I definitely don't want anyone to get scammed. Yeah. Try, yeah. Just yeah, trying to go to the rodeo and have a good time. Evelyn, I know that you're pretty new, relatively new, even though you're from Caldwell. Very. You're pretty new to the Caldwell Night Rodeo hype train. What sold you on it? What got you to actually bite the bullet and do it? Last year was my first time attending the rodeo, and I was obsessed. I loved it. I loved just seeing the community come together. There is just this energy. There's this excitement. Everybody's having such a good time watching these top. What do you even call them? What do you call like them? Athletes, <laughs> I guess. Rodeo, yeah, rodeo, athletes. rodeo contenders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they are just so good. It's really, really a great show. It's a good way to just spend time with your community and your friends, and yeah, enjoy a good show. What's your favorite? Ev- I've never been to a rodeo. So what is your favorite event? You're from like Eastern Idaho. You've never been to the Eastern Idaho and Montana. Fair? No, I don't. Oh, I grew up country. Wow. I'm not, I don't know. I, I don't. Okay, I can't explain I it. it. I can't explain oh, it. But I'm interested wow. now. Well, number one, the food. Evelyn, please, well, yes. t- please talk oh, about the I food. See, I've been to the fair, just never at the rodeo. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I actually haven't ate food at the rodeo. I just had a, a quite a few drinks there. <laughs> you get your, like your bucket of beers or you get your bucket of whatever drinks they're selling. Um, but yeah, my favorite event honestly was the barrel races, which oh. a lot of people lost interest in watching these women just like killing it on their horses, doing the barrel races. Um, that was probably one of my favorite events. That sounds so much fun. Yeah, a bucket of beer and barrel racing. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. What, what have I been doing my whole life? Yes. Well, I'm definitely, Blake, you really hit on it. I, you know, I got to get the kids ready for school. So this is kind of August becomes a fit everything in that I've been putting off. Like, oh, we don't have time for that this week in the summer. Now mm-hmm. I'm like, we have to fit every summer thing in right now because school is about to start. So for my activity that we absolutely have to do, we are going to the Bruno Sand Dunes Observatory. Because nice. yeah. my family always loves it. And it just is one of those things where we plan on it and then it just doesn't happen until August. But um, we're going to be going this weekend because the best time to go, the, the insider tip I have is you want to go when there's a new moon because the sky is yep. darker. So you can see more of the nebulas, more of the constellations. It's just such a good view. And so the new moon in August is August 4th. So you're going to want to go on Friday or Saturday. That's when they're open. So August 2nd and August 3rd is when you're going to have the absolute best view of the month. Now it's in a state park. So to get in, you do have to pay $7 per vehicle just to get into the park. And then there's the sand dunes. If you want to spend time there or have a dinner picnic or something like that, absolutely you can. But then when you get to the observatory, it's $5 a person or $20 for a family. So doing the family deal. That's a deal for my family. Um, And then they have tours that start at 6.30 p.m. And so you can tour the observatory. They tell you about the telescopes and they have a new one this year. I don't know what it's called, a bigger, better telescope. Yeah. Um, And then they have presentations that start at 9 and 9.30 that are planetarium presentations. Those are really interesting. They talk a lot about what you can see through the telescope. So it's kind of a good primer to do the presentation. And then when you're looking through the telescope, you're like, oh, I know what that is. I I know what I'm seeing. I'm not just like looking at stars. And then they have telescope viewing from 930 to 1130 p.m. So it's just uh, my kids all really love it. You get to see amazing things in the solar system, um, amazing constellations. The planets look so close. And there's uh, like amazing informed experts there who will tell you what you're seeing, explain more about it. It's just really interesting. 
it's gorgeous that we have something so close to Boise that yeah. you can see all of these amazing celestial things. It's it's really fascinating and just always a good evening. That's such a cool plan. I, I love that. I have been over the last year or so have really nerded out through like the International Dark Sky Association um, because there's been this concerted effort like you know, worldwide to preserve dark skies yeah. um, because of light pollution. It's like a really serious problem for a lot of creatures and also for our ability to see the stars. And so mm-hmm. the Bruno Dunes State Park um, just earlier this summer, um, like achieved a dark sky park status, which is they a really did. big deal. Um, they put a lot of effort into like kind of changing up their outdoor park lighting fixtures and stuff so that it can be, you know, more dark sky friendly. Um, so I love this plan. I feel like if you haven't been f- like to, to Bruno Dunes to see the, the, like the dark sky of it all, uh, this is a really good time to do it and like kind of show up and show support for them too. Um, one, one thing I do want to mention is the Perseid, I believe meteor shower, mm-hmm. um, which is an annual meteor, sh- meteor shower, um, is happening August 11th through 12th. So like after the next weekend, the moon will be a little bit more full, uh, not quite half full, um, but a really good opportunity to go down there and and see that as well. So there's there's two really good weekends. Two good opportunities. And see some really interesting things. Spam sucks. It clogs your email, your text messages and is a waste of time. Did you know that spam starts with your personal data being sold? When you get online, data brokers collect information like your phone number, social security number, even your health and financial records. They sell your info to businesses, and then they use your personal info to target you. If you're sick of spam and scammers, you should check out Incogni. That's I-N-C-O-G-N-I. They scrub your info so it can't be sold. It takes just a few minutes to set up an account, and they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose but spam and scammers. Protect your data, time, and sanity. Use code CITYCAST for 55% off the annual plan at incogni.com. That's I-N-C-O-G-N-I dot com. Okay, let's jump to one of my favorite aspects of our monthly guide. That is the food category. Evelyn, what is your August food? What are you going to be eating this month? What do people need to check out? Yum. Okay, I need to know. Are you guys fair people? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, no, Lindsay, you hesitated. Well, You're okay, like, <laughs> I have kids, so I have kids and I don't want to pay for them to get the armbands because oh, it's so expensive. <laughs> okay. That's really I'm, yeah. I'm a take my husband and go to the fair. I was going to say, it yes. sounds like a date. Yes. Yeah, yes. No, yeah, that's yeah. Perfect. It's a, so, but don't let my kids hear me say that because I'm always like, oh, sorry, guys, it's so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I'm going to the fair, I am not going to go and get on all the rides. Like, I am going directly to the food. And I will spend all evening there if I have to, because I have a list and I'm going down my list and I'm eating all these things. I start off with a Pronto Pup Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. and I just put some ketchup on it. We'll keep it simple. No mustard. No no mustard. I agree with Evelyn on this. That is (laughs) appropriate. This is heinous uh, (laughs) criminal activity on the pod today. I'm grabbing a prickly pear lemonade and then I'm picking up some tater tots. There was these like buffalo... This sounds odd because I don't like blue cheese, but it was like these buffalo blue cheese ranch tater tots. Oh, my God. Insane. They were ginormous. They were like hash browns. (laughs) Oh, wow. Amazing. Love that. And then, of course, I have to get a funnel cake. So always. Yeah. Yeah. The Western Idaho Fair is from August 16th through the 25th. So, yeah, I got to find a day where I'm going to go and get my food. That that is Oh, food fair is amazing. Okay, do you ever, Evelyn, do you ever get like fried things? Not like, of course, everything's fried, but like fried candy bars and fried Oreos and like all of that where it's like, they're so bad for you, but it's no. so good. Oh. No, do I need to do that this year? Is okay, that what I'm doing? Try Fried Oreos, delicious. What? I also, I think I had okay. a fried Snickers once. That yeah. It's terrible. It's Those not good, good for you. It's the worst mm. for you. <laughs> Have a couple fried bites. pickles. It's so good. Yeah, I fried hate pic- pickles. Oh, okay. Oop. Don't do that one. Get, get yourself the Oreos <laughs> and the Snickers. Yeah, okay. It's like, I try to be mostly healthy, but when I go to the fair, I'm like, I'm just going to yes, eat. Yes, this is like, yeah, the, this is the time in August where I'm like, you know what? I don't care. This happens once a year. Yeah. I'm going in. 
All bets are off. All bets are yeah. off. My favorite thing, that is such a, I kind of forget about the fair every year for some reason, but it is one of my favorite August things to do is like, yeah, get a, get a corn dog, extra mustard. I don't know about this Ooh, ketchup business. That's crazy. But oh, that no. is the peak activity and then go see the animals uh, because it's so fun to just like eat something really sweet and fried and like look at all the animals. Oh man, I also, I love this as a food pit because I also go get the food and then I like to go see like everyone who's cooked things and like the veggies and yeah. the art. Yeah. I love seeing like what people in the community have done. When I was a kid, I always submitted a whole bunch of stuff to the fair. And yeah. so I always love to see what people have done who got blue ribbons. And that's very the exciting quilts, for me. The quilt yes. section is riveting, like genuinely. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And like the yeah. photography. I am. I'm like, we have treasures all over the valley. Like, look at these people. So talented. It's such. Yeah, it's such a fun time. Okay, Blake, what, what is your food pick? We've, we've already had fair food. We're going to have a great time. What, what are you eating in August? What do people need to check out? I think that one of the saving graces of August, as it gets so hot and so smoky, um, is that it's peak farmer's market produce time. I mean, there's, there's different peaks of farmer's market produce. You know, earlier in the year, you have things like strawberries that are coming in and we'll, we'll get some stragglers in during August, but like, for me, it's the heirloom tomatoes. I mean, uh, you get so mm. many tomatoes. And also, like, corn is really starting to come in this month. Um, and, you know, I mean, there's all of all of the classic goods. I mean, it's potatoes are, like, being harvested and whatnot right now. And, I mean, if it's been a minute since you've made a meal with, like, really good farmer's market produce or um, just, just gotten some produce in general, uh, this is the time to revisit it because it is just, like, it just tastes different. It is completely oh, different than so what good. you're than the food that you're going to get at the grocery store any time of the year. Um, and for me, it's especially the heirloom tomatoes. I got some last week that were like, we're almost there. Like it's, we just need like this weekend will be really good, and then every weekend for the rest of for the rest of August and into September will be like delicious. What are you using your heirloom tomatoes for? What are you making with them? The first say 50 that I buy are just going to be eaten plain <laughs> like oh, or like just like salt sliced and pepper, up or you're just maybe like... salt and pepper uh like some flakier sea salt maybe if I have like a nice like fancier vinegar that I have bought uh which you can also get at the farmer's market um but most of the time they're they're delicious you oh, don't need to so put them good. in anything um they're best when they're fresh because they can just like they sing so loudly uh they are just delicious and then and then from there once I've kind of gotten my fill of that um I love to kind of like grind them up and like put them in just like a really fresh tomato sauce, Ooh. kind of like a cold pasta vibe, a co love a cold noodle salad, that kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, heirloom tomatoes are just dying to be eaten fresh. I think. Oh, I was gonna say like every year I love a good tomato sandwich. I don't know how country that makes yes. me. No, a hundred percent. I'm, oh, I'm like, on board. Getting yeah. some fresh bread at the farmer's yes. market and those heirloom tomatoes, like that's all I'm going to eat for like Saturday, Sunday, Monday is just tomato sandwich after tomato sandwich. I love it. I know. I know. It's uh, the farmer's markets are so fun this month. And it's like I get so hyper fi hyper fixated on everything. And like people love to go to the farmer's market and like hang out, but usually and like socialize and stuff. But when I'm there, it is business. Like I usually get a couple foodie friends and I and just go like don't talk to us. We are we are in our zone. <laughs> We're finding what calls to us. Um, and it's amazing. I love it so much. Okay, I need to go to the farmer's market with you because I just see the booths that don't have anybody there. And then I feel bad for them. So then I go talk to them. And then I just end up buying like a whole bunch of stuff I don't need. Lindsay. But I feel so I know. No, I'm no, I get I'm, it. I I'm get too it. empathetic yeah. there. I need you to just like, Take me by the hand. Take me by the hand. Make sure we're just buying tomatoes and bread, and no, then we're, we're getting out of there. In. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do a guide just for you. Yeah, Blake, I'm curious. What's a good budget to have when you're going to the farmers market and you're buying produce? Like, how much are you spending? I think that it's less for me about monetary budget and more for looking for just the week ahead and planning out your meals. So Ooh, I'm not a huge okay. meal prepper, but just say like set yourself a limit. I would actually advocate for setting a really strong limit for yourself of like, I am buying whatever I need for three meals. You know, don't stretch for more than yeah. that mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. you're really experienced at it, because then you're going to have veggies like fresh, locally grown veggies that go to waste. Um, and nothing makes you feel guiltier as a person, or at least for me. So yeah. maybe I'm projecting. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's more about setting yourself kind of the budget of the meals that you want to prep for. Um, and, and also like snacks and stuff like that. But I think that it's more about it's less about money for me. Um, maybe maybe that's just how I'm hardwired, but more thinking about what you want to prepare and then 
treat yourself to like one or two things other than that, but don't go too hard um, because then you'll you'll have stuff going bad in your fridge and you'll feel terrible. So my my one piece of advice, one big one to kind of budget out for is figure out, find a good like gremolata or something or salsa verde that you can make with carrot tops uh, because the the carrots that you can get at the farmer's market so often come with like these beautiful, really long, tall greens yeah. uh, that it's really easy to just not use. So make sure that you find a recipe going in that you can use your carrot tops for because the carrots themselves are delicious, I think. Um, and But you you often find times need to find a reason for you to use those that produce. So I could I could go on no, and on I about love farmer's market produce. No, I love that tip. So, I think that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. See, and it's it's all about balance. Like, it is, you got yeah. August, you're having your fair foods and you're also getting the best of the the farmers markets. Yeah. I would say maybe maybe if I had to put a number on it, Lindsay, uh you're going to spend 50 bucks at the farmers market. Don't go above that, okay? I think that's that's a good goal. That's yeah, yeah. Especially like for the fresh produce, you're getting everything you need. Yes, exactly. Okay, so my pick for August is I don't know how much this is an August pick as much as I just want to eat this a few more times in August. Um, so I went to the Highlander at the Renegade Hotel. Um, I was having drinks with a friend. It was lovely. And then I was hungrier than I thought. And I was like, oh, you know what I'm going to try? I'll just I'll get a, a Wagyu slider. And it was the best burger I've had in Boise for a while. Really? Whoa. It was. I was surprised. I was shocked. Yeah. It was so good. Um, the bun is some kind of brioche. You get you get three when you order the sliders and they're good size. Like I really only need like one and a bite of one more. Um, but it has a bacon marmalade, roasted jalapeno aioli and onion namasu. I don't know what that is, but it tastes really good. So sounds so savory. Like it, so it was. Rich. It was like yeah. so good with a beer. It just tasted like summer, and you've got that great view of Boise. I I was shocked. It was so good. And I do want to say the jalapeno aioli. I'm not super spicy like I can't handle super super spicy this was the perfect amount of just like some heat super savory like a tiny bit of sweet with the bacon marmalade just like a touch um and it was just oh it was so good like it I I absolutely want to go back again like this weekend it tasted like summer like that with a cold beer looking over Boise it was stunning and I'm definitely going back probably a couple times in August so I think I think That's everyone awesome. should try it out that sounds really good. I've been looking for, I love a slider. I, I love a slider. I think that that's a great pick. Yeah. Did you go during a weekday or during the weekend? I have been on a weekday and the weekend. The weekend, it was significantly busier. So yeah. you might have to wait. Outdoor spaces, it was super smoky, but the outdoor spaces still filled up really, really quickly. Um, so just plan on maybe waiting for those if you want an outdoor space or if you prefer an indoor space. There was plenty of seating. So. I was able to get a spot pretty quickly, but yeah, the vibes were nice. The views were lovely. I can't wait for the smoke to clear and be able to see a little more of Boise when I'm up there. Okay. So now we're going to talk about all of the free things that you need to be doing in August. We, we've talked about activities and food, things you're going to be spending money on, but there are great free things happening around Boise. So Evelyn, what is something that people should check out that's free? Yeah, at the beginning of the summer, I feel like I always create this big, huge bucket list of all the things that I want to get done. And then once August hits and I look at my list and I'm like, I don't think I really like yeah. I need to finish this. Like I need to <laughs> yes. do all these other things. And for me, one of those is spending time by the river. I think that, yeah, August is the perfect time to yeah, wrap your summer up, spend some time by the river, kind of reflect on your summer. Um, just enjoy the views before, you know, before that's all over. What is the spot by the river that you love? I know everybody has their spots or their places. Where do you go to just hang by the river? Okay, so this is the hard part because, yeah, there are so many spots that you can kind of just walk in. And so I don't I have no idea how to identify them. Like you're kind of just you just find them and you're like, all right, this is it. This is where I'm going to sit. So I know that, Blake, you're a big fan of spending time by the river, reading by the river, hammocking, doing all that fun stuff. I want to be you. How do I do that? OK, I think that one of the good ways to do it is just 
I mean, kind of figuring out what you want to accomplish. Like, do you want to go really be like sunbathing or are you looking for a picnic vibe? How much do you care about bugs and the possibility of being surrounded by bugs? Um, Also, do you want to be chilling by the river where, um, you know, maybe a bunch of men on um, tubes that are floating by that have had a few too many beers are going to yell at you? Um, Been there, done that. Super fun. Uh, What a thrill. Um, it's but so I think that it it depends on what you want. I think that okay. one of my go tos, um, I think that there's just a whole stretch of the river over by the Park Center Bridge, um, which I feel comfortable saying that kind of giving that away because there's it's a really long stretch of the river where on either sides of the river um, there's either like really rocky beaches or um, little slightly sandier beaches. I mean you're not going to find super sandy beaches, but uh, there's there's kind of big gradient and also like Kristen Armstrong Municipal Park is right there, which I feel like I can't get on this podcast without talking about that park. But I think that there that's a really good stretch to go to um, yeah. for for kind of figuring out what your vibe is. Um, and then also I would say if if you want to avoid the floaters and whatnot, uh, there are a few really good spots in Garden City um, so that you're kind of out of the main float float route um, that you can, yeah, you can kind of go to, maybe have a little more peace and quiet. Um, but yeah, I really feel you. I think that um, this is the time to kind of get some picnic stuff together, maybe grab a couple friends and go hang out by the river. Just to let you know, there is one really good spot in Eagle. If you go down. I've never been. Oh, this is this is kind of I've been gatekeeping this, but I'll let you guys know because I like you guys. And I guess our (laughs) listeners will know now, too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But if you are in Eagle and you go down past Bardenay, there's a little area where it's rocky and the river is pretty low there. Um, And it is the perfect spot to just put up like camping chairs or something and just bring a beer and you can just like dip your toes in. And it is so nice. And if you uh, go a little further east, there's a nice spot. I know this doesn't apply to you, but where it gets a little deeper. So we let the kids swim a little bit. And then you just sit and it's kind of sandy. It's very shaded. So it doesn't get too hot. And it's just a really great spot to just like have a beer, watch the kids splash around and build little rock towers and little dams and stuff and just have a really lovely time by the river. Okay, amazing tips. I'm excited. So yeah, I definitely want to spend some time by the river and maybe... Maybe I'll get crazy and even do a couple floats, but Ooh. we shall see. We They're, shall see. She's letting loose. <laughs> yes. I would say, if you do, let us know about them. I want to know what you think. Yeah. Yeah. Lindsay, how about you? What are you, um, what's your free activity? Okay. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, it is the Idaho Island Festival. It's first ever. And a lot of these festivals are always in Boise, which is understandable. I know why, but this one's in Meridian. So we're, we're finally having a cultural festival in Meridian and it's August 3rd at Kleiner Park. Um, they're going to be running it from 1030 a.m. through sunset. And it just sounds like so many fun activities um, on their website. They are featuring uh, performances by Junior Miley, who is um, a, a fairly well-known Polynesian singer, um, songwriter. And they're also going to be having traditional Polynesian shows from Tonga, New Zealand, Tahiti. Um, There's going to be a fire knife dance. Um, And they're going to have tons of activities all day. They have a whole list of activities at different times that they're going to be um, presenting and that you can come participate in. Um, There's going to be they're going to be making Maori kites and kids can come help make a Maori kite. They're going to be having hula demonstrations and a hot hula workout. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm I'm intrigued. Um, they're going to have lay making, ukulele lessons, storytelling. Um, lots of food vendors are going to be there. So I'm just I think that's a really fun weekend activity to come learn more about um, different people who live in this area and get to have a cultural celebration in Meridian, which we never get to do. So this is the first time you said? Yeah, the first ever. Okay, who's putting this on? It's sponsored by Idaho Pacific Islanders, and they said that they just want to empower and uplift the Polynesian community in Idaho and preserve their cultural heritage and promote um, education and economic development and really 
involve the community in that. So I'm really excited about it. That's so cool. I love that it's happening in Meridian. Yeah, my my kind of free activity, and I, I do say kind of free. I'm so sorry, I'm cheating a little <laughs> bit. Um, and we've talked about this before, but the Boise Soul Food Festival is on the 10th in Julia Davis Park from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, you, it is free entry. So you, you know, you can kind of go in and just like enjoy the singing, the music and the dance and, um, all of the different like free activities that there are, but I do encourage you to spend your money. Um, this is a really cool celebration of like black culture in Boise. Um, we, I recently, we recently reshared, uh, an old episode from like two years ago, talking to the organizer of the Boise Soul Food Festival, Sherry Baber, and she has a lot of really good tips for for enjoying this and kind of about the history and whatnot. So I think it's a really good, really good like combining history and present, um, you know, with like just amazing food. Uh, one of her tips that I did last year that I really encourage people to do. Um, is bringing kind of your own Tupperware or just going planning on buying more than one meal so that then you can just take it home because oh, that's we just don't have that many opportunities to get really good soul food or, um, you know, there's there's food from all over the diaspora, the African diaspora, so you can get food of all, all different kinds. And um, if you just bring your own Tupperware, uh, you can have some some meals ready to go for the rest of the week that you'll really enjoy. Blake, I'm really curious. What what food did you have last year that was just a standout for you or that you're definitely going to check out again? I mean, I think that the kind of classic soul food f- uh, stuff is amazing. Um, one restaurant that I will continue to shout from the root cho- rooftops is Amina's African Sambusas. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sambusas are really, really good and I think totally worth trying. They're, they're typically uh, like East African influenced. And so, um, yeah, they're delicious. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I also have one more thing to round out our August guide that doesn't really have anything to do with anything, but I just wanted to share it because it's really cool. It's this really cool art opportunity through the city of Boise's Department of Arts and History. Um, they're trying, they're basically commissioning an artist or team of artists to light up the Boise Depot. So on the back of the Boise Depot in like next April, um, there is going to be this four day um, display, I guess, uh, kind of exhibit that's going to be projected onto the Boise Depot. That is the, the, the whole prompt. The idea is imagining what the future of transportation in Boise could look like. Um, and the city of Boise is not joking around about this because they're throwing $10,000 behind it. So if you wow. or an artist that you know is interested in projection work or anything like that, the the deadline is uh, next Wednesday, August 7th um, to apply for this. So go check out that information. And again, it's, I mean, artists are always looking for any money whatsoever behind a project, but this is $10,000. So um, I expect a lot of applications to go in. And I think that we're, we're all going to benefit from something really cool coming out of this. So check that out. That's awesome. We'll, we'll link to where you can go to check it, that out and get more information in the show notes for anyone who's interested, because that that is a great bonus to the guide. Yeah, it's it's nothing that we that any of us can partake in in August, but um, something cool to look forward to for sure. Well, thank you both so much. I think these are amazing tips and definitely things I'm looking forward to and I think will help people really experience Boise in August. Yeah, I'm more excited about this month now. So thanks, guys. Yay. Happy August. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, check out our website for even more events to fill up your August. That's boise.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with our Friday News Roundup. Catch you then. Bye.